Here we are back again, this time with my electronic ignition fit. And I'll give you a quick tour, a quick guide, of how it all goes. Here you can see the cable from the electronic ignition unit, and it goes into a terminal block here, which feeds into the LT cable, which supplies the HT coil. And also I've got my ignition switch, which I must remember to turn on. Walking around to the other side, here you can see the electronic ignition unit fitted. I fit it in such a way so it's basically kept dry and also as well it's kept away from the heat and also it must be well insulated so it doesn't earth or find a ground through the frame otherwise it won't work properly. The two cables, one comes from the, from the contact breaker points and that provides the switched ground and the other one goes back to that terminal block I showed you earlier which feeds the LT ignition side of the circuit. And the cables basically are just tied using tie wraps and fairly carefully rooted so hopefully there's not too much rubbing or any problems and then they go up to that terminal block by the ignition coil. Right, I'll try and start this. Hopefully it won't let me down. So the arc starts easily. It's just under half a kick. Revving it up a bit. Quite well with the left side ignition. The end is running smoothly. Anyway, I'm just going to rev it up and see how well the left side ignition takes me there. I've had the running engine running up to full revs and the engine didn't miss a beat so it's looking very promising so far with this electro ignition unit the only thing though is it won't compensate for a badly set up or operating carburetor it still won't start if your carburetor is no good so you've got to make sure that that's working alright and quite well set up I'll just give it a good revving up to maximum revs again to prove it wasn't a fluke very nicely and I'll just run it up to the normal running red. 